Uh, I'd love to start with you on China. Um, Didi last week, today it's ByteDance, Tencent. We know they've been around the block with Alibaba. Can you explain to viewers exactly what you think Chinese regulators are thinking right now? Well, I'm not exactly privy to what they're thinking, but I think it's logical that China, which has an authoritarian approach to its government, is looking at the rest of the world and noticing how Internet platforms, when they get deeply pervasive, have a profound impact on society and on politics. And they must see the destabilization of democracy in the U.S., in Brazil, in other countries, and say, hmm, this is something we need to keep under control. Because I do think that Internet platforms have gotten in many parts of the world to the scale of, uh, of states, and that makes them competitors. Wow. So, which, I mean, for example... What lessons specifically do you think they've learned here in the U.S.? Is this a, uh, a cautionary tale out of Facebook or Google or something I, I, else? Hey, Carl, I don't know. But it seems to me that the really obvious thing is that Internet platforms have so much information about the people who use them that they have the ability to be a catalytic force in politics. That's what we've seen in the United States and the United Kingdom, across Europe. You've seen it in, in South America and Brazil and in lots of parts of Southeast Asia. And so I would think that the Chinese would be looking at this and saying they don't want something other than the government to have that level of insight about people and that level of influence. Right. Uh, Rogers, David, I mean, there was a time when we thought social media would be a force for democratic movements worldwide. I think we've uh, gotten rid of that notion. But the Chinese are a surveillance society to begin with. I mean, in, in many ways, controlling these platforms only enhances their ability to know everything about their population. And that's not to mention what they're able to accomplish as a result of rolling 5G out throughout the country. I'm completely aligned with that, David, because it just seems to me that from China's point of view, having government control of those companies is a huge positive. And, you know, letting them get too independent that may not be in their best interest. So we've got, I guess the question, Roger, is whether we have similar, maybe slightly uh, less aggressive uh, strategies at work at, with, among governments in the EU, right? And clearly in the United States, whether it's FTC or DOJ. Uh, do you think whether or not they're all going the same speed, that directionally uh, governments are waking up to the threat that I guess you've written about for years now? Well, I mean, Carl, we're going to have to see. What's clear in the United States is that there is no muscle tone in our antitrust infrastructure. The, the judge who threw out the FTC and state cases against Facebook, the reason underlying that was at best, uh, I mean, it was, it, was, it was not a serious analysis. And yet it's that easy to stop it when the... House Judiciary Committee reported out six antitrust bills. It only took a handful of California representatives to prevent that from coming to the floor of the House of Representatives. So I look at this as the industry, I don't think it has an immediate threat from antitrust, but it is, in my opinion, inevitable that governments are going to want to reassert control of their environments and take some of that power back from internet platforms. How long that's gonna take, I don't know. If I were an investor in this group, I would look at their specific situations to try to understand the risk. So taking Facebook as an example, I think the greater immediate risk is potential impact from Apple's iOS 14.5. You know, again, Apple's only half of the North American market, but apparently the vast majority of people are opting to not have their data shared by by facebook and other platforms right that that strikes me as a much more near-term risk to the stocks than antitrust you know roger um it's hard to imagine these these companies are going to be able to do large transactions for example buy something large or anything like that but what you're getting at is more the idea i think that eventually they'll what be broken up as a result of court order where there's a successful case brought against them or because of new legislation? What's it really going to be? I know it could be years. Yeah, David, I, I don't know. The most immediate antitrust threat is the Texas Attorney General's case, which is price fixing against Google with uh, Facebook as the co-conspirator. And if 
the information they put out publicly already is correct, and there's no reason to believe it's not. They have a very solid price-fixing case. And if the federal government, the Department of Justice, were to join or take over that case, they could pursue it as a felony. And it was only last year that the CEO of Bumblebee Tuna was sent to prison for three and a half years for a price-fixing case that was not only similar, but about 1% as large. And so you... To me, the threats from these things are less likely to come short term from new legislation than they are from things within the legal system or behavioral changes that are imposed by companies like Apple that result in you know, a meaningful drop in, in advertising revenue for Facebook. Or with respect to Google, you see that Flock, which is their new uh, surveillance system, you know, is being pushed back and that there may be some issues there as well relative to the immediate advertising business. So, so finally, Roger, um, how would you tell investors to try to capture some of the structural growth that's happening within tech without running into some of the buzzsaws of regulation like we're seeing out of China in the last couple of weeks? Again, investors have been more right than I have about when regulation <laughs> was. And, you know, I look at this and everyone has been rewarded for for being uh, loyal to the stocks. As I look at it today, I, I just I think we're coming into a you know a water torture mode for the US and the West in terms of annoying things that at the moment have not been hurting numbers. But I think the Apple threat and the ability, inability of Google to get flock to be acceptable to advertisers, that those things suggest the business is going to have at least some headwind. And that may not hurt the stocks, but I just think at this point, you want to be looking for the next generation. And I think investors would be well served to remember that antitrust is actually incredibly pro-growth. If you go back and look at the history of it, it causes huge job growth. It causes huge increases in stock prices over time. And generally, at least in tech, it results in the creation of whole new industries that make investors a lot more money than the old. Yeah. Uh, an argument, Roger, you've been making uh, better and better over the years uh, and consistently. Appreciate it. Good to see you again. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.